So folks, one of the things about Donald Trump is he loves hearing the sound of his own voice, but hates being questioned in any meaningful way. So hit the like and subscribe button as we track a reporter asking Trump the simplest question in the world and him exploding in rage over it. And of course, it's connected to all of his legal troubles. But what's really fascinating is it comes from one of the friendliest sources for Trump and also just one of the friendliest individuals for Trump. And it demonstrates that even when people within the sort of MAGA sphere do the most basic elements of journalism, not even consistently, not even with full professionalism, but even just on the rarest times, ask the most simple questions, Trump is infuriated by it because he says to himself, the reason why 99.9% .9 of the time I avoid real interviews with real reporters and real journalists is because I don't want to take actual questions. How dare you do this to me? And it is directly connected to the bombshell reporting over the last few days, especially around the fact that, yes, we knew Trump stole documents. We knew that. But we have audio tape of him waving around a document being like, this thing right here, uh, It's a, I would love to show it to you, but it's too classified. It's too secret. What's in here is very, very, very secret, and you have, you know, you're not important enough to have your eyes on it and Trump was asked about that damning recording and he lost it but here's some reporting the context here because it's the dichotomy of Trump on the one hand his big fat loud mouth gets him in the trouble time and time again whether it's live or on these secret recordings but when he's given the chance to use his big fat mouth to explain himself he is pissed that you would even try and that it was classified the source tells NBC News the recording was made during a meeting at Trump's golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey, and included people who were helping former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows write his memoir. The source adds the tape was played during testimony provided to the grand jury that has been investigating Trump's handling of classified documents. Yesterday, Trump said he doesn't know anything about it that everything he did was right, and that he's only being investigated because his poll numbers keep going up. If my poll numbers went down, it would all end. You know, every time my poll goes up, I say, uh oh, this is problem. But we had a poll today that showed I was uh, 44 points above number two and beating Biden and beating Biden by 11 points beating Biden by 11 points and beating Biden by 15 and 16 points in some of them. And he's not doing well against Biden. I just, everything he said, I mean, it reminds me of The Last Jedi. Everything he just said there was wrong. It really was. I no need to even tick through it. Um, I, I will say, though, Doris, you look at the two cases that should cause Donald Trump the most concern, Georgia and at least in my opinion, Georgia and, and the documents case, and they've got the tapes. They've got the receipts. Right. They've got his own voice, the voice that the grand jury heard. He can call it witch hunt all he wants, but this is he's got him dead to right on intent on stealing the documents. Uh, can, just talk about the history, if you will, of tapes taking politicians down. I mean, absolutely. When you think about what may happen to President Trump, former President Trump, tapes will be, if it is, the ending of it. So for a closer look at how all of this could fit into the special counsel's larger investigation, let's turn now to CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig. He's also a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York and a former federal and New Jersey state prosecutor. So, Ellie, as we look at this, there's a timeline here, right? So this recording was apparently from July of 2021, but at Bedminster. Yeah. How does that fit into the larger Mar-a-Lago case? So this is such important reporting here by Paula and the team. And I think the best way to understand why is to look at the timeline. Now, let's start on January 20th, 2021. At exactly noon Eastern time, Donald Trump leaves office, most importantly, loses the power to declassify documents at that point. Now, a few months later, in May of 2021, the archive starts interacting with Trump's team and says, hey, we have some concerns. There are some documents missing. We're going to need to talk. Archives then proceeds to negotiate with Donald Trump over the next several months. And during that time, 
Two months after that, this is our new reporting. So we're in July of 2021. Donald Trump has this meeting that Paula talked about at his resort in Bedminster, New Jersey, where he's meeting with these writers. And there's been a story out about how Trump allegedly was planning to attack Iran. Trump doesn't like that story. And so he says on the recording, we haven't heard the recording, but we know the substance mm -hmm. of it. I have a document that disproves that, but it's classified. I cannot show it to you. After that, Archives continues negotiating. Trump turns over 15 boxes to Archives in January of 2022, but Archives says we still have concerns. Then they call in DOJ, and that leads us to last summer when DOJ does the search warrant at Mar-a-Lago. So this timing on the Bedminster recording is really important because it's after Trump loses the power to declassify, mm -hmm. and it's also after he knows that Archives says we have concerns. Right, and, and the fact that he says, I can't show this to you because I know it's a classified document. Exactly. So when we look at all of this, I think we're, we're starting to get a sense of what the former president's defense will be, those comments last night, but also comments from Tim Parlatore, uh, his former attorney. So I want to take a, take a listen to what he said to Jake Tapper. This is a situation where uh, failure of process is what led to documents leaving the White House, going to Mar-a-Lago, failure of NARA to get a facility in Palm Beach, as they have for every other president since Reagan, uh, get a facility within the hometown of the president where they moved to, to move the documents to. That's what led directly to documents going to his house. So he's saying there's a failure of process. It's my understanding from our own CNN reporting. He is wrong. That is not how this works, that in fact, uh, the documents would be under the auspices of the National Archives, which came knocking at one point, right? They would end up wherever a former president decides to have a library, not just where he ends up. Yeah, this argument about the warehouse is really a so what argument. When you get down to the law, prosecutors have to prove, one, Donald Trump had knowledge. Did he know he had these documents? Obviously, he's acknowledged that many times, including in this in this recording. Two, did he have some sort of criminal intent? And one thing we've learned from this new reporting is he was doing something with those documents. He was using them to try to shape the public narrative about his time in office. And let's remember, he has made these repeated false public claims about whether he declassified. We remember at the town hall, Caitlin mm -hmm. asked whether Trump had, had ever showed declassified doc or classified documents to anyone. And Trump responded, not really. I would have the right to. By the way, they were declassified after. We know that's not true. Former President Trump claiming he knows nothing about a 2021 meeting uh, federal prosecutors have on tape. CNN reports that Trump acknowledged in the meeting at his New Jersey golf club he still has a classified Pentagon document about a potential uh, attack plan on Iran. This was his denial last night on Fox. You no, know, I don't know anything about it. All I know is this. Everything I did was right. We have the Presidential Records Act, which I abided by 100 percent. It's a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time. It's a hoax. And it has to do... It has to do more than anything else with trying to interfere with the election. For more on the meeting and the federal investigation, uh, let's turn to CNN's Paula Reed in Washington. Former President Donald Trump campaigning in Iowa, refusing to take questions on the bombshell revelation he was recorded discussing classified information. Mr. President, why did you take classified documents concerning General... But continued to claim he's a victim of federal investigators. I'm a victim of it. They've come after me. They've come after me on many things. This after CNN's exclusive reporting that prosecutors now have an audio recording of Trump talking about a classified plan to invade Iran while he was at his Bedminster golf club months after he left the White House. Among those attending the meeting, several Trump aides and two people working on an autobiography for former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. None of them had security clearances. During this time, Trump had aides record his conversation with journalists and writers. They become automatically declassified when I took them. Trump, under investigation for his handling of national security secrets, has previously insisted that he declassified any sensitive material in his possession. 
If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. But sources tell CNN on this recording, Trump claims to still be in possession of a Pentagon document, suggests he would like to share it, and then acknowledges the limits of his ability to declassify it. All of this undercutting his own defense. The third issue is there's a special counsel that's appointed, and news broke yesterday that there might be a tape recording that, quote, where you acknowledge that you understood yeah. that these were classified documents. First of all, do you know who this call may be with? Do you know anything no, about it? No, I don't it? know anything about it. All I know is this. Everything I did was right. We have the Presidential Records Act, which I abided by 100 percent. Biden has 1,850 boxes with a lot of classified stuff that he's not supposed to have in his case. I have the right to declassify as president. He's got 1,850 boxes that he doesn't want anyone to see. He had seven or eight boxes in Chinatown in Washington, D.C., where nobody even speaks English in Chinatown. Chinatown is very, it's, it's in favor of China. And he has boxes in Chinatown. They took those boxes and they sent them to Boston to his lawyer so his lawyer could look through them and probably do things that you're not supposed to do. No, this is about election interference. And in fact, I have to tell you, so we covered that event last night, right? But I, I, I didn't bring that particular clip to you, right? Like, that's a pretty telling moment. Like, Sean there, a, a very rare moment. There, there was almost no journalism done in that entire thing. It was basically even more egregious than the CNN town hall. That Fox one was, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a Trump rally. It was Fox, like they should be, they should be, they, they should be forced to declare that as a campaign donation because it was effectively Fox hosting a town hall for Trump, putting it on the air. Think about how much it costs to buy primetime ad space on Fox News and then factor that in as an entire hour, hour and a half, however much they gave him. But for that one moment, they did a little bit of journalism and the look on disgust exploding on Trump's face, like he sort of dodges the question and pivots. Like, what about Biden and all this? Like, there's any comparison between his document scandal and the other ones. The other ones were 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 issues of, of negligence with Pence and Biden and all of that. His was of malice and criminal mindset. But the point is, he can't even take that. So on the one hand, he loves to use the microphone to spout his BS. And he loves to use these massive platforms to spout his propaganda. But if you dare ask him the most simple question, which is basically, there's this massive story in the news. Can you explain it? He can't even do that. Not even from the friendliest source. This man is the weakest man in the world. If he can't take a simple question from somebody who's literally his friend, how is he ever going to effectively run the country? The answer, he will never be a good president.